These are the stories topping the news. PM Douglas towards SIDF-funded renovation of OTI. Primary, primary school seeks funds to expand poultry production. And a China issues alert as air pollution soars. Good afternoon and welcome to ZIZ's Midday Newscast for Friday, October 10th, 2014. I am J.D. Keynes. Now the news in detail. The Federation's Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Dr. Denzil L. Douglas, believes that the renovation of the Ocean Terrace in OTI, with financing from the Sugar Industry Diversification Foundation, SIDF, will improve the tourism product. The SIDF has provided a U.S. $5 million loan to carry out the renovation, in which substantial improvements will be made to the hotel plant infrastructure and amenities, including technologies to reduce the hotel's energy demand as well as a state-of-the-art information and telecommunication platform. The Prime Minister said the upgrades will improve an iconic property. The OTI, he said, has been the symbol of tourism in the heart of Bastyr and is very significant to both the government and people of St. Kitts and Nevis. He was accompanied on the tour by Chairman of the St. Kitts Nevis Angola Trading and Development Company, company, TDC, Earl Kelly, and OTI's general manager, Richard Williams. Kelly has disclosed that some EC $6 million has been spent on the project to date. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Douglas said the Sugar Industry Diversification Foundation is to provide the necessary capital to improve on the infrastructure of the country and to provide incentives during periods of prolonged global economic and financial recession. With 70 workers employed on the first phase of the project, Prime Minister Douglas pointed to importance of the construction sector to the overall economy. The OTI is expected to open late December 2014 or early January 2015 with 34 rooms. Minister of Social Development, the Honorable Marcella Liburd, is appealing to parents who have separated to be responsible adults in the interest of their children. According to the minister, too many of the cases which end up in the Child Protection Department involve children who got caught in the crossfire of battling parents. Generally, the ministry has also offered training to all parents, mothers and fathers, as we believe in keeping families together. In the last two years, counseling services have intensified in the Department of Child Protection, as many of the sources of conflict with children stem from tension between parents. I can't encourage you more. Most of the problems that we see originate from the fact that the fathers and mothers are not getting along and the children are pulled along in the middle of this tug of war. I'm appealing to you as big people to put aside whatever personal differences you have and come together in the best interest of your children. The topic was raised as Liber addressed the nation's foster care program, which is operated by the Department of Child Protection Services. Time. We also have foster care. We have approximately 45 to 50 children placed in foster homes. They get food vouchers, $100 per month, and school uniforms. We meet their medical needs, and also we train the foster parents, and that is extremely important. There is training of the foster parents to take care of these children. A part of her ministry's mandate is to see to the welfare and maintenance of children in group care who have suffered abuse. The St. Christopher Children's Home is one such institution. We also place children who suffered either physical or sexual abuse. We make an annual subvention to the children's home, the St. Christopher Children's Home of EC $20,000 that is paid on a quarterly basis. The medical and educational needs of the children of the children's home are also met by the ministry. The spirits in the St. Kitts and Nevis football camp remain high as the team goes into its second match of the second round of the CFU Caribbean Cup in Haiti. The local boys lost the first match on Wednesday 3-2 against Barbados to trail the group. In an exclusive interview, assistant coach of the national football team, Shavon Douglas, said the players took too long to adjust to the conditions in the first match. The team's performance was subpar. Um, the early parts of the game, we were <coughs> dragged out of shape, um, but took quite a 
bit of time to adjust to the flow of the game. Um, we were able to get that done in the latter part of the first half, stabilize the whole program, and um, we came back out uh, in the second half with a, with a better focus. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to get the the, the, the additional um, tying goal. Uh, so unfortunately, we went down three goals to two. Looking ahead to tonight's match against French Guyana, Douglas said the players remain focused on winning. This game, um, I'm certainly confident that the, the team would come out with a renewed spirit, renewed energy. Um, so now the guys are going to be focused on the tasks, knowing that there is no more room for errors. And I'm, I'm convinced that um, at the end of the day, we're going to come out with a W. The second match in the group will be played between Barbados and host Haiti. In regional news, four schools in Antigua and Barbuda are awaiting word from the Global Environment Fund, GEF, on the application for $68,000 for the construction of a slaughtering house and to expand their poultry production. Agriculture science teacher at Princess Margaret Secondary, Craig Cole, said the funds are being sourced through a wider project put forward to GEF by Dr. Evelyn Weeks to make the country self-sufficient in poultry production. Meantime, Princess Margaret Secondary is spearheading efforts to formalize a cooperative comprising nine schools which sell the fruits of the agricultural science programs. The institution has been buying, packaging, marketing and selling produce from, from other schools under the PM label. St. Lucia's Ministry of Health has been engaging representatives of the tourism industry on the deadly Ebola virus. DBS's Alex Buske has the details. While addressing the meeting, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Ms. Cointha Thomas, noted the seriousness and timeliness of the meeting on the heels of reports in international media of a case of Ebola in Dallas, Texas and Madrid, Spain. Yola Senjo, Finance and Administration Officer at the SLHCA, noted while issues of occupancy at hotels and border security are important to her members, sensitization is key. The SLHCA official stated that the main issue for her members is dissemination of information and education on the Ebola virus to allay unnecessary panic. Dissemination of information about the virus. Um, it was all discussed at this meeting, and I'm going to take that back um, to the association and ensure that all our members are kept in the loop about what to do, what not to do, um, just in case this virus um, does enter the island. When asked about the main concerns for the tourism industry, Donovan Williams, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Heritage and Creative Industries, stated... For us, it's about ensuring that our borders are secure enough to detect and to treat with any suspected cases. And I think that, that came across very clearly that now that we do have some systems in place, there is, uh, I think, an effective system that will allow us to deal with any matters that do arise. The meeting also focused on matters relating to protocols to be used at the various hotel facilities on island in the event of a suspected case of Ebola and sought to explore the state of preparedness and capacity of hotels to handle such cases. For the DBS News World, I am Alex Bousquet. Internationally, China has raised its air pollution alert to orange, its second highest level, as the country's air quality deteriorates to potentially harmful levels. The announcement comes as the country returns to work from the annual Golden Key holidays, with traffic congestion contributing to the problem. Al Jazeera's Rob McBride reports from Beijing. Back to work and back to the smog. It's a scene that is depressingly familiar for Beijing's commuters. The first badly polluted day of autumn, with only a winter of more pollution to look forward to. Just outside Beijing, preparations are well underway at the complex which will host the annual Apex Summit. Normally a chance for the host nation to show off the best it has to offer, China is hoping it won't be remembered for its smog. 
The venue includes a convention center, hotel and VIP villas. Ironically, it's being constructed to the highest green standards using innovations like clean energy and wastewater treatment. But on a day like today, you can't see much of it through the haze. Officials are working with local industries to cut down on pollution ahead of the gathering. But it only offers a brief respite. For people like Manuela Perino, a little too brief, too late. She made the decision several months ago to leave after enduring worsening pollution over nine years. For her son Jacopo, checking the daily air pollution reading had become too much of a habit. Every morning he wakes up in the morning and the first thing that he does, he checks the apps on the, on the phone to see how much is the pollution to see if he can go and play outside or if he has to stay inside and, uh, and I can't stand it anymore. It's two years, uh, the last two years it got really, really bad and I think that it's time to go. For most people though, leaving is not an option as they brace for the smoggy months ahead. Rob McBride, Al Jazeera, Beijing. Mexican authorities reinforced security in after discovering more mass graves thought to be connected with the disappearance of missing students. Julie Knowles has the details. Extra security officials patrol the streets of Iguala in Mexico as investigations continue into the disappearance of 43 students. The extra federal officers are here after 22 local police were arrested in connection with the incident and the subsequent discovery of mass graves that contain human remains. The students went missing after they clashed with police in September. The police and the town's mayor are being investigated, although the mayor has not been arrested. Officials fear the graves, four more of which were just discovered, bringing the total to 10, may contain the remains of the students. Forensic studies are still being conducted. The involvement of police and government officials in the incident has prompted public outcry and underlies the widespread corruption inside the country's security force. And now the weather. The skies today will be bright and sunny along with patchy clouds. Temperatures are expected to reach a high of 30 degrees and a low of 25 degrees. Winds will blow from the southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow is expected to be another sunny day. And that's it for ZIZ's Midday Newscast. Join us at 6.30 and 7 p.m. when we present our major news package. I have been your presenter, J.D. Keynes. Have a great afternoon.